All right, folks, yesterday uh, I was on Air Force Two to uh, Detroit. Uh, we left out of Andrews Air Force Base, uh, headed to Detroit uh, with Vice President Kamala Harris for the second leg of her economic empowerment tour. Last week, uh, she was in Atlanta. This is her getting off the plane in Detroit, being met at the airport there with the U.S. Trade Representative, as well as uh, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist of Michigan, as well as his wife. Also on the trip was, of course, uh, the uh, Energy Secretary, uh, Jennifer Granholm, former governor of Michigan. Also, uh, you had uh, my man Don with uh, the Commerce Department, as well as uh, the Deputy Administrator of Small Business Administration. They were all there as well. So uh, it was uh, a great time. And the whole point of this uh, was for her to talk about what they have accomplished. The Biden Harris administration has done dealing with the economic issues, but also to deal with the reality of how African Americans uh, have fared under this administration. Uh, it was a very tough uh, last uh, last couple of years. COVID under the orange one, uh, and so they had to dig this economy uh, out of a massive, massive hole. Uh, and so, in her conversation, uh, in her speech, there, one of the things that. Uh, Vice President Harris talked about was housing. And those are, we've covered this a lot in terms of the impact on housing uh, when it comes to the creation of wealth in America. This is what she said. Thank all of the extraordinary leaders who are here today. We are also helping more people buy a home. Home ownership is one of the most powerful engines of intergenerational wealth. It builds equity which can help pay for a child's college education or provide equity that then can be used as startup capital to start a business. But as a result of lasting legacies of structural inequities, such as segregation, redlining, and so-called urban renewal, Today, black Americans are 40% less likely to own a home. And home owner, this is a sad fact, and home ownership rates for black men have been falling for three decades straight. We've got to do something about that. So to help address these disparities in our budget, President Biden and I outlined a blueprint to provide folks who are first in their family to buy a home with $25,000 toward a down payment. <laughs> to give families up to $400 a month to help with a mortgage and to build 2 million units of affordable housing to lower costs for home buyers and renters. We are also calling out and addressing the issue of racial bias in home appraisals. We all know the stories. We've heard the stories. The stories like of a black family that gets a home appraisal and the valuation is much lower than they know what their home is worth. So they get a new appraisal only this time, they replaced their photographs with photos of a family friend who was white, and they asked that family to bring in the appraiser. And the new appraisal is much higher. We've heard those stories. Today, I'm proud to report that we have made it now easier for more homeowners to appeal home appraisals, and we have reached a commitment that all licensed home appraisers be required to complete racial bias training. Now, I always get a kick out of folks uh, who comment on social media, other platforms, complaining about, oh, she's doing nothing for black people. This is not impacting us. Uh, We want tangibles. We want to see results. So let me explain to those of you who don't quite understand what that appraisal discussion means. Uh, The vice president didn't mention this. Uh, I wish her speechwriters had put this in there because this is important. The Brookings Institution two years ago did uh, a study 
And in that particular study that they broke down, they talked about the impact on black people and these appraisals. Now, I want you to understand something. We're, st we're talking the 21st century. This is what they said. Racial bias in appraisals is called how racial bias in appraisals affects the devaluation of homes in majority black neighborhoods. Jonathan Rothwell, Andre Perry. We're going to go down here. I'm going to show you all something that's going to blow you all away. Because we want to talk about how the Biden-Harris administration, by attacking this problem, actually impacts black people. So it shows you in here uh, the data. This is what they say. Uh, they say, we continue to find that homes in black neighborhoods are valued roughly 21 to 23 percent below what their valuations would be in non-black neighborhoods. Neighborhoods with a majority of Latino or Hispanic, Asian American or white residents do not experience home price devaluation using the same model. Now, here is, look at that big number right here. The cost of devaluation across 113 metro areas in the United States with at least one majority black neighborhood is approximately $162 billion. Let me repeat that again. Let's keep it right there. The cost of devaluation across the 100 in 13 metro areas in the United States with at least one majority black neighborhood is approximately $162 billion. That's money that could be going to black people. That's money that black people could be used to invest, to give to churches, to give to HBCUs, to give to civil rights groups, to put into the stock market, uh, to help your own kids buy homes. Y'all, these are black people with homes. And the vice president talked about the, home, the low home ownership rate for African Americans. These are black people with homes. See, y'all might remember when I did the uh, podcast of the conservative podcast of Patrick Bet David. And he and I went back and forth because, oh, he thought I was wrong. He thought, how dare I? He thought that I was just sort of making this thing up and, and he called it anecdotal. Uh, and, and then he got uh, really upset because I was challenging him on this very issue when it came to home appraisals. And he was like, oh, well, you know, you're just sitting there, you know, bringing up, you're just, you're just, you're just bringing up you know, this anecdotal stuff. And I'm like, anecdotal? I'm bringing up anecdotal. No, I'm bringing up actual information. And so when I challenge him on it, then his own person, uh, for some reason, couldn't pull it up. Because, see, Patrick, he didn't believe in systemic racism. But, see, the fact of the matter is, this is what we see. And we see these things consistently. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.